What's up guys, Triple G Beast here. Hope you're all having a fantastic weekend so far. So it's no secret that I'm a huge Star Wars fan and of course a huge video game fan. And months leading up to Star Wars Battlefront 2's release, I have been talking quite a bit about this game, saying that it looks pretty impressive, a huge step over the first game, and a lot of people want to know my thoughts about it. However, with the huge amount of controversies and just several aspects of the game that have just totally turned me off, in good conscious effort, I just, there's no way that I can come to feel that I should really purchase this game. Now here's the thing, if you guys are really loving the game, this video is totally not for you. If you're enjoying it, you think it's the best game of the year so far, I'm totally happy for you and I don't want this to take away anything from that. Just take my opinion with a grain of salt. This is solely my personal opinion and why I feel that again, subconscious effortly I can't bring myself to purchase it and I'm going to be bringing up a lot of concerns that me and many other people share as well so I'll get this out of the way first I have played Star Wars Battlefront 2 I did play the beta and I have played the game at release for a couple of days now I've already played through the entire campaign and I play quite a bit of the multiplayer so I absolutely know what I'm talking about this isn't just because I'm getting on like a hate bandwagon as some people like to call it so ultimately is the game fun Yes, it is very fun. However, a lot of that is taken away from the fact that the campaign is abnormally short. It only took me about four hours to complete, and that's actually on the hard difficulty, because I heard that on lower difficulties, the enemy AI isn't as smart, so I actually played it on the hard difficulty. It took me only four hours to beat. The story itself, pretty lackluster. It, it is pretty forgettable. And actually, it has a really good introduction. The prologue mission is great. Actually, the first couple of missions are great without spoiling anything. But I felt that about halfway through the campaign, all the way up to the very end, it was extremely predictable. And really, I didn't really care for any of the characters. It was kind of a nice nostalgia feeling seeing like all the main Star Wars characters have cameos in the campaign every now and then. But other than that, I mean, I really didn't care for the main character that much, even though she had a strong intro. And a lot of the other side characters, again, totally forgettable. I couldn't even tell you what their names are, to be honest. However, I do have to give DICE credit. They actually did listen to the fans because they were really, really wanting a campaign, single-player campaign, in the first Star Wars Battlefront. We never got it, and they listened to us, and they put it in the second game. So while it is there, and it's not really great, I am happy. And again, I gotta give them credit that they took the time to really listen to people to try to implement one into it. But let's be honest, the multiplayer in this game is really the main spotlight surrounding it. And the multiplayer itself, super fun to play. When you're in there in the moment, especially the space battles. The space battles, I gotta be honest, are some of my most favorite parts of the game. They even improved the flight controls, which I'm super happy they did that. So combat wise is superb. I loved every moment of just blasting the hell out of everybody else, flying around in the Star Wars ships and blowing things up. And the maps are, in my opinion, way better than the first game. They're a lot more open up, a lot more variety of them. I love it. And lastly, of course, is the graphics. The game looks absolutely incredible. It is totally on par, if not it surpassed my expectations on how it was actually going to look, especially if you guys have a 4K monitor. It looks amazing. I mean, even if you don't have a 4K monitor, just if you get the game with at least a 1080p resolution monitor, you can totally see that DICE really took the time to make sure all the textures look great and all the lighting, shadows, just everything. The game looks gorgeous to look at. I haven't heard a single person say, wow, that game, the graphics look awful. No, not one person has said that. I think we can all agree that the game looks awesome. Even the sound design, I mean, you can, you can tell that DICE is really keeping faithful to all the little minute Star Wars sound effects. I mean, the blasters, the way the ship sounds when they're flying around, just everything is superb. Like, the music is great, they enhanced a lot of the music, made the quality of the music even better. So overall, the actual game design of Star Wars Battlefront 2 is great. We can all agree there. However, what ultimately kills, just murders, the Battlefront 2 multiplayer is of course the star card system, otherwise known as the loot crate system. Now, for those of you that are still kind of confused by it, you just hear the words loot crate and then you're automatically turned off, which is understandable, but it is pretty confusing on how it exactly works. Basically, it is similar to many other games that have util utilized a similar card system or whatever. 
it is in a way kind of like digital gambling where after you complete a match you get these random rewards that you get to choose from but you actually have to pick which card you want and then you randomly get assigned a reward. I mean this can be anything from an emote to an ability to a weapon whatever the case may be basically that's what the star card system is so in actuality it doesn't matter how good you play the, the match you could have been the worst player the entire match and you get this amazing rewards however a really good player may get shitty rewards and a lot of games have been implementing this system and gamers have said time and time again that they absolutely hate it However, publishers, they just seem to keep putting it in their games and we're getting really tired of it. Now previously, and what really was just destroying the immersion, especially in the beta, is if you wanted to increase your chances of getting better rewards, the game implements the system with crystals, okay? These crystals, you had the option to purchase them with real life money. So huge flag right there in the game, as it should have, got a lot of flag for that. And thankfully, very recently, in fact, I think they actually took them offline either the day of or the day after the game came out. I can't quite remember, but the day of or the day after the game came out, they actually removed the microtransactions from the game completely. However, what really is kind of iffy about it is they said it's temporary. They said that the purchasing crystals is going to become available at a later date, but Basically, the microtransactions in the game have been removed indefinitely, but I can pretty much guarantee you this is EA. EA is greedy as fuck, so they're probably going to put them back in the game eventually. In my honest opinion, I think that they took out the microtransaction, so the game's sales at release wouldn't be hurt as much, because as we all know, games typically sell the best during the holiday season. So I think because EA realizes that, they want to try to get as many sales as possible through the holiday season, that way they can really get their numbers up for sales, and then after the holiday season, they're going to put them back. So basically, they're trolling everyone, saying, Haha, you already bought our game, and we're putting microtransactions back, so fuck you, you can't do anything about it. So I ultimately think that's what's what going to happen, is after the holiday season, maybe a couple months after that, they're going to put the microtransactions back, and it's going to piss a lot of people off. But again, EA doesn't care. They don't care if you already purchased the game. They don't care how pissed off you are at the microtransactions coming back because you already bought the game. You already gave them money. So this comes back to, in my good conscious effort, I just can't bring myself to purchase this game. Simply because a corporation knowingly is trying to screw over its customers and trying to take advantage of them as much as possible. I think that's a horrible business practice. So despite the gameplay itself being fun, the overall design of the game is great. The progression system in the multiplayer totally kills it for me. And just the thought of EA putting microtransactions back in the game in a future date really puts me off from purchasing it. I most likely will play it again, but honestly, I'm probably just going to rent it, or if I'm able to just get the game totally for free and keep it that way, then I'll probably do that as well. But in the end, I just, I can't bring myself to put my hard-earned money towards this, because again, guys, EA doesn't care how pissed off you are. They only care about your money, and if they're not getting that, then they have no choice but to change how their business practices work. So while I do commend a lot of people for putting their foot down and saying, no, this is bullshit, take the microtransactions out, and EA, DICE, whoever ultimately made a decision, I think that DICE may have saw all the complaints and told the corporate leaders over EA and ultimately forced them to take them out, at least temporarily. Again, EA doesn't give two fucks what you have to say about the game. They only care about your wallets. If you vote with your wallet, EA has no choice but to change how their games work. They're going to look at this, they're going to see the huge, huge decline in sales, and they're going to be like, uh, maybe we shouldn't do that anymore. And lastly, I did forget to mention that they have made it aware that there is going to be some free future DLC for the game. However, they haven't really announced what that DLC exactly is. Is it just a couple more maps? Is it a couple more classes from the multiplayer? Again, no one really knows, so I really can't give my opinion on that until I get more information about that DLC. DLC. But in the end, the progression system on the multiplayer just totally kills it off for me. 
and knowing the fact that I would be putting my money towards this game where a corporation takes advantage of its customers, I can't bring myself to do it. But those are my thoughts, guys. I'm really interested to see what you guys think about all this. So if you want to express your opinions, if you agree or disagree with me and want to bring up something that I forgot to mention, please feel free to put it in the comments. If you guys enjoy this video, please give it a like. It really helps me out. And be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notifications so you never miss a new video. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, peace!